We got the brand new Razer Basilisk V3 right here. We're gonna take a close look at it, run it through the full review gauntlet and figure out if it's actually worth it. At first glance, you might be thinking that the Basilisk is absolutely massive. And while it's definitely not the smallest mouse out there, I think it's a little bit misleading at the same time because that iconic Basilisk shape and design with that huge flared out thumb rest and really aggressive curves, I think that comes together to make it look bigger than it actually is. If we take a couple of Razer's other popular gaming mice and lay them out around the Basilisk, that should help give us an idea of how the size really stacks up and compares. So this one here is the Death Adder V2. This is an Orochi V2. And then this guy over here is the iconic Viper Ultimate Wireless. So when you take a look at the Basilisk next to all these other options, it really kind of puts things into perspective and you start to realize that, yeah, it's a good sized mouse, but it's really not like overly huge or gigantic or anything crazy like that. When it comes to the weight, I measured 102 grams. And by today's standards, a lot of people are probably like, that's way too heavy and they're gonna just be turned off by that altogether right away. But I wanna caution you for a second because with the Basilisk, the shape of this mouse fits your hand so well and so comfortably that even though it's over 100 grams, it just kind of works. It also definitely helps that they got these nice PTFE glide skates down here on the bottom. Helps keep the mouse gliding around perfectly smooth and again, it just kind of works with the Basilisk where you don't really notice that it's as heavy as it is. Build quality here is really solid, which is totally not surprising. If you've ever used a Basilisk mouse before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. We got a nice hard plastic shell. It's a matte black finish with some accents that are glossy here and there to make it look nicer. And then we've got some nice rubber rubbery textured material on both sides for your thumb and your fingers. Just really nice feeling material all the way around. Buttons on here are really crispy and responsive. And I'm not just talking about the primary left and right clicks up here. It's everything, the side buttons on the thumb side, the top buttons over here. Everything just has a really nice responsive feel to it. Doesn't feel like there's a ton of mushiness or pre or post travel either. Couple things to talk about right there. First of all, you've got Razer's second generation optical switches powering these left and right clicks. They have an insane 0.2 millisecond actuation speed and a crazy high life cycle up to 70 million clicks. So as far as performance goes for mouse switches, these are pretty much top of the line. The other thing worth mentioning here is this scroll wheel. We can go forwards, back, and also left and right. And then we also have the ability to toggle with this button right here between tactile mode and free spin mode. So two different modes for the way the wheel's gonna behave. In tactile mode, that's kind of what most people are used to where you got these tactile bumps you can kind of hear it and feel it you can move one line at a time if you want to that type of thing but then if you go into free spin mode it's just like what it sounds like this thing is going to have no resistance and just kind of keep spinning there until you touch it or if you re-engage tactile mode with the button so that's pretty cool on its own but if you jump into the synapse software you can actually take things a step further you can enable acceleration and that's gonna ramp up the scroll speed the quicker you move the mouse wheel. And then you've got a smart mode on here as well. And what that's gonna do is automatically switch between the two different modes for you based on how you're scrolling. I didn't really find this setting all that useful for gaming, but I did like it for scrolling around web pages. I could get to the bottom of a really long web page super fast just by flicking the scroll wheel and engaging that free wheel mode. And then as soon as I put my finger back on it to stop it, it engages that tactile scrolling and just goes right back to normal for me. And I thought that was pretty sweet. Like I could scroll around these web pages as fast or as slow as I want without having to change any settings on the mouse or even touch any buttons. Let's take a quick look down here at the bottom. We have our profile button towards the back, really easy to press and just toggle between all the different profiles that you can set up. They can be game specific or whatever you want really, you just switch between those with that button. And then we have our Razer 26,000 DPI Optical Focus Plus sensor. It has 650 IPS tracking speed and 50 G acceleration. That is insane, mind-blowing specs, way more DPI than I would ever want, but at the end of the day, I really don't care about numbers when it comes to gaming mice doesn't matter to me one bit. All that really matters is how it performs in game. I've been really into Apex Legends lately and I've been playing a ton of that with my Rocket Cone Pro Air. Switching over to the Basilisk from that mouse did take some time, not gonna lie. There's definitely a noticeable difference in the size, shape, and weight. And on top of that, the Basilisk's a wired mouse. Now, we do have Razer's latest SpeedFlex cable on here and it does a good job at minimizing drag, but you can definitely still notice that it's there. I grip with my fingertips and the Basilisk feels perfect. 
Its ergonomic shape actually feels comfortable with any of the main grip styles, and it's one of the most comfortable mouse designs to have ever existed as far as I'm concerned. The performance of this sensor is pretty much flawless. Big surprise, right? A top tier Razer gaming sensor has flawless tracking performance. Who would have thought? You've got 26,000 DPI to mess around with on here, and I actually played with it at 600. Like I said before, I really don't care about those big numbers. I just expect consistent and reliable performance, and that's exactly what I got with the Basilisk. Couple more things to mention before we finish up. That RGB lighting on the Basilisk V3, really good, really well done by Razer. They got that nice light bar all the way around. It's nice and bright. The logo lights up, the scroll wheel lights up, and you've got all that control over those lighting effects through Synapse. So you can jump in there, play around with all that stuff, crank up the brightness, turn it down, whatever you want. You can get pretty crazy with it and even customize your own stuff. Razer lighting is always pretty much top notch and that's what we're seeing here. And there's also five onboard memory profiles so you can mess around with your settings and save everything right to the mouse itself. And that can be really useful for anybody that likes to switch between systems a lot. Maybe you got a desktop, a couple different laptops, a work computer. If you like taking one mouse with you everywhere, you can save your settings on there and away you go. The bottom line here is the Razer Basilisk V3 is a feature packed modern gaming mouse that's probably going to satisfy even the pickiest gamers out there and I think that's true regardless of skill level. If you're entry level or you're playing at an esports competitive level, doesn't matter. This thing is so feature packed and the performance level is so high that it's just going to work for pretty much anyone. So as long as you're right handed, you like ergonomic mice and you don't mind a little bit of weight, the Basilisk V3 is pretty much a no brainer. Razer is asking 69 US dollars for it, and considering the level of performance and the build quality that you're getting with this thing, I think it's completely reasonable. Gonna have the purchasing links down in the description along with the full specs, and if you like this video, you know what? Don't subscribe. I'd really like to keep this channel as small as possible. See you later.